Shello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you to AARP Alabama for having me. I am your MC, Mr. William A. Yarbrough. And uh, before I start, I thought that it would be wise since not many of you know me, I would assume. I don't know. I don't know who's watching, but I was just going to give a, a little history of myself and uh, then go into playing. Uh, Basically, I'm, I am fr originally from Alabama, though I have lived other places. Um, I've been a working musician around, hold on, let me do the math, I'm getting older. Uh, 18, 18 years, something like that. Um, and uh, I grew up in a small town called uh, Maylene, Alabama in Shelby County. Um, just kind of start actually when I started playing I really did want to be like famous and then one day upon upon being a working musician I realized this might not work out um, I don't mean that it like stopped my desire from playing but definitely put things in perspective and uh, uh, moved to Atlanta back in 2011 and uh, to try and further my career and um, I am a musician who is uh, not only open to sonically hearing everything from metal to jazz to country, uh, I'm really into all of those different styles. Uh, I'll say, given that I'm playing acoustic guitar, you won't really hear all of that, but you'll hear a, a mix of sounds, I would say. But I guess you can expect, as I've uh, once been described as an uh, artist who plays feel-good music, um, not overly happy, not overly sad, just kind of right in the middle is what I'd say. But um, <laughs> I'm going to start by just playing some instrumentals. Um, and, and to be quite honest with you, I guess going back more into the history. So I've, I've played in, uh, when I was talking about all those different bands, I have played in all those different bands and their extremities. And by extremities, I mean when you think of that genre and what type of people would be at that show, I've done it. Uh, you know, I've played uh, heavy metal with guys who come across like really mean, but they're actually really nice once you get to know them. You just got to get to know them. Um, to, you know, guys who make moonshine in, in a country band, um, uh, R&B, smooth jazz, all that. And actually at one point or another have been doing, uh, you know, I'd say, like, I can remember going from a, a r and practice to a heavy metal practice to a smooth jazz practice. Like, I've, I've done them all. Um, beyond that, uh, nowadays, I, I don't, I don't want to blame it on COVID. I kind of started chilling out on playing live so much, uh, probably at the end of last year. But um, I mostly these days I don't play as much. I play at a church and teach a handful of students, and that's I guess what keeps me involved musically. So um, it's it's more fun though these days I guess not having to play because it, it is like work sometimes. But so with all that said, let's just have some fun. I'm gonna play uh, some instrumentals, and I think towards the latter part I'll uh, sing some that I wrote. And uh, yeah, quite honestly, I'm, I'm just kind of freestyling here. Um, this first one I'm gonna play you, I actually wrote when I uh, moved to, or not when I moved, but while I was living in Atlanta. One day I, I got this notion that I wanted to potentially write uh, Christian music, um, but in a different way. Um, as I've been playing in church since I was 15 and, um, I don't know. It, it seems like so many of the songs are like the same thing, the same thing. So uh, anyhow, I started writing it and then I, it was really difficult to play and sing. So it, it didn't work out. So I just left it as an instrumental piece that I call uh, Ode to Life. Uh, I'm going to play this one. And then honestly, anything else you hear beyond that, I'm probably just kind of making it up. But uh, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Here we go.
yeah, that's Ode to Life, which I would say uh, I was probably just thinking about maybe the way I was living life at that time. That was that was a few years ago. <laughs> uh, so yeah, actually going back to what I was talking about, I'm just kind of making stuff up. I have uh, in my latter years of my playing career, uh, kind of com- I don't want to say converted. It just kind of happened. Like in in the in the art world, mm, lots of times anyway. Um, you just you kind of go with the flow, or I, I do anyway. Like stuff just comes to me. But what I'm getting at is, is I, I've spent a lot of time uh, playing private events or house parties or art exhibits or something where you just kind of literally background noise. And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't sing. I just will play. Sometimes it's two hours. Sometimes it's three hours, and. I just just play chords and uh, shred over the top. <laughs> uh, so that's what I'm going to do now. Honestly, I'm just going to play some chords and go with the flow. Um, and that does require a little bit of thinking for a moment. Thank you. 
I got to tell you, uh, one, I'm really hot. It's, uh, you probably notice I'm glistening over here, <laughs> which is not uncommon. I actually often when I play, for some reason, I get really hot when I play on stage. But uh, I was thinking to say as I was playing that uh, I was thinking how I'm probably like telling musician secrets because I, I know that I'm not the only one who like makes up stuff or um, – has enough knowledge, I guess, uh, to like just make up something on the fly. Um, but it's true. There's this thing called a looper. That's what I'm using. That's how I'm sure you noticed I was record or I was playing the, the riff and then I wasn't playing the riff. It's called a looper. Musician secret. <laughs> it's a a great practice tool as well as a live tool. Uh, and you may, you probably have seen it before. I'm, I'm not super crazy with like beating on the guitar and all that kind of stuff. I'll just kind of get to the point. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what that thing is that allows me to do that. Um, let's have a uh, social here. I am having a light. You see, it's not much in there, but a light beverage here, a uh, margarita of some sort. Tastes kind of peachy. I like it. But we have to be an adult also. Hold on. Water. <laughs> um Yeah, I'm 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 just gonna do that again. Play play something that feels good. <clears throat> um actually this is a another riff that I, I made up or tune I made up. Uh, I don't have a name for it. Um, it's another one of those that I was writing lyrics to, got stuck, and just let it go. But uh, I like it. <laughs> it's kind of jazzy.
pardon me just a moment. I'm going to tune real quick. <clears throat> and while I'm at it, I'm going to actually, I say while I'm at it, I can't do two things at once. I just wanted to check some of the comments, see if anybody asked any questions. Although I was told people don't usually ask questions. <laughs> How unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take a second and kind of look look through these anyway. Uh, Candy Williams, hi. Cheryl Stokes, hi. Andrea Bozarth, hi. Um, Betty Jones Smith says she is enjoying the concert and her looks like some sort of drink. I don't know what that drink is, but she's drinking something. She's happy right now. Uh, thank you, uh, <laughs> Becky Bird and Wanda Jean. Um, that's pretty much it. There's a private chat, but it's private. I can't tell you what they're saying. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, um, we still got roughly 20 minutes. Man, this is short. I do appreciate, again, uh, AARP Alabama for having me on here. Um, it's uh, really kind of common uh, when I think about it. I said it's, it's short for a uh, original artist, especially if you're just doing like an opening slot for it to be 45 minutes. But again, doing like that private stuff, like uh, weddings or something, it's like four hours. So 45 minutes is, it's like nothing. Um, so maybe, maybe I don't know if, uh, we didn't talk a whole lot about it, but I hope uh, maybe they'll be doing this again in the future. Uh, well, it, to my knowledge, they're doing it with uh, in conjunction with COVID and whatnot. So maybe I hope they don't do it again in the future because um, the the masks are, are getting crazy. Like it's it's fashion now to wear a mask. I'm not saying don't wear your mask. You should wear your mask. At least I wear them because I don't I don't want any trouble. <laughs> but the point being, uh, if COVID wasn't in place, uh, they probably wouldn't be doing this and. We probably wouldn't get to meet each other, so I do appreciate it. But um, yeah, I'm gonna keep going here. Maybe one or two more instrumentals before I get into uh, a few with vocals. Hum. Cheers, social. <laughs> I played in a a uh, a cover band um, that kind of was. Uh, geared towards the college market, which a lot of cover bands are, like if you can play in a college town. It, it's it's kind of the thing, just because you know that the audience is, they're gonna be there, like a frat party or something, they're gonna be there and, you know, have a good time. Anyhow, the singer, he would always like say something about a social. I don't I don't know if that is, uh, I don't know what that's referenced to, I guess is what I was really wanting to say. Does that mean be social? I don't know. Somebody let me know. All right, carrying on. Um, I told you this making up stuff. You got to think for a second. <laughs> um, that note's sticking out, so let's ride with that. Blues, maybe? Yeah. Somebody comment real quick. Because it's, it's a, uh, I don't just virtual applause. <laughs> was it Becky Bird? Was, she said virtual applause. I don't, I'm trying to recall if that's the person that had the drink. No, that was, uh, that was Betty. Anyhow, sorry. Blues, bluesy esque. Let's do it. Thank you. 
thank you. I'm just hearing all the all the clapping going crazy. And I don't know how bluesy that was, but yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, looking at the time, I feel like I should do my singing songs before I run out of time. But first, I was instructed not to drink too much of these, and I'm not being an adult that knows their limit. I'll keep it small. I just need to tickle the tickle the throat. <laughs> I'm trying to give y'all the live show atmosphere and see if we were at a bar and they got that open bar tab. Oh, man. It's going to be a good night for the band. <laughs> Musician goals. <laughs> we don't want the discount. Please don't. Don't try to offer me the discount. That doesn't do me any good. That means I'm still paying you while I'm trying to make money. No. <laughs> That's not the jam. We want the open bar <laughs> or, well, yeah, yes, the open bar. This, this, that's the ultimate. Please and thank you. Cheers, social again. <laughs> and in the water, remember, adult, be an adult. Um, so I've only got three songs that I, in my head, want to do. Vocally, um, I will say, although they're probably new to you, um, they're actually like old for me. And I, I've, I've written a good bit of songs, um, but uh, that, that was a while ago. Um, I used to, going back to history, I used to have my own band and do my own thing and be like super focused on that. Um, and that's where most of these songs uh, the time period anyway they derived from um i will say also most of my songs are uh lovey dovey or related to like broken heart I'm always, i always find myself writing songs like when i'm in pain it's very rarely that i do it when i'm happy but <laughs> this next song uh, I can distinctly remember this was actually again when I was living in Atlanta um, and upon uh, a friend of mine uh, I feel like I should mention his name but I feel like I shouldn't I'm, for some reason I don't know why um, no actually I am going to mention his name no I'm not because that'll that'll be bad but <laughs> I, a friend of mine got signed and I, I basically began to like study his music more and the more I listened to it the more I realized like how happy it sounded and I originally was kind of a minor tonality kind of uh, kind of guy and I remember when I wrote this song I was like man I want to I'm gonna make the happiest sounding song ever that you know for me anyway um, and at the same time the song is really talking about uh, you know, because as a musician, we're not the richest people in the world uh, or artists in general. I also do photography, by the way. Plug two-way media. Um, I uh, and in that, it's like more often than not when you when you you know meet chicks that have like college degrees and whatnot. It's like you know what what can I offer you? Like besides being nice, I don't I don't know what else to do. <laughs> um, it's like if I had the money to buy you a BMW, I would, but I I don't even have a BMW, so I got the I got that margarita you want though, or that martini. I, I got you covered, baby. <laughs> I got that open bar tab, remember? See? See how that works? <laughs> uh so this song is called uh, Four Letter Feeling. Uh and goes a little something like this. I'm 
a young fool, I'm a good dude, just trying to make the most of my time. I would all day and night, but I ain't got a time to spend on you. I can treat you nice, sure. I can even take you for a ride. But it ain't no things outside. Just a bottle of gin and good times And I got a feeling And it starts with me It ends with you And four little letters Go in between the two Connect the two again lay some blues on us <laughs> um dorothy curry thank you so good becky bird uh she said good jam gotta run I'm sorry you gotta run it'll be by the way this will be up later if you just so get the desire to visit the aarp uh youtube page i think it's aarp alabama um, I'm sure they got a link if you go to their page. Um, to my knowledge, it'll be hanging out there for a while. Cherie Parker, like it, she says. Thank you. Um, and Dorothy Curry again. Awesome, great singing. Thank you. And lastly, before I do the next one, Robin Hayden Williams. Sorry. Right. 
Um, so <laughs> going back to history, <laughs> uh, Miss Robin, I actually, well, sorry, so many things running through my brain. So going back to history, so I was telling you earlier, I used to have you know my own band and thing and to do that. <clears throat> But uh, that was literally, man, that was literally like over 10 years ago. But basically, you can't. I'm sorry, the stuff you're hearing, it'd be really hard to find it online. I'm not saying it's not there, but you'd have to do some digging. Um, I'll say you can check out my YouTube channel. Just like search my, my name. There's various videos of just guitar playing. Um, and I also do have a Reverb Nation page. I actually feel like that song that I just played might be hiding out on there somewhere. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's Reverb, ReverbNation.com slash William A. Music. Um, you can find me just doing like instrumental stuff and, you know, little excerpts on Facebook. You, again, just, just search the name, William A. Yarbrough. Um, on Instagram, you can find me at T O O, as in too much, uh, T O O W A Y 85. That's like my personal page, um, which it's got a bunch of random stuff. But again, if you were to see me playing guitar, it would probably be on there. Um, so, yeah, like this stuff is kind of like secret in a way. Like if you've been to a show before, which again, that was like years ago when I was doing this stuff, but you've heard it. Um, not too long ago, I was playing a show in Argo, Alabama at this random, uh, I think it was a restaurant slash bar. Um, and this guy came up and was like, man, I got your, uh, I got your, your CD. I think he actually had the physical CD, which it was at that time. It was just the, you know, I burned the CD, uh, at my house and then wrote on it with a permanent marker. Like he had it, um, so somewhere out there, you, you can find this music, but it's difficult. <laughs> um, anyhow, before I run out of time, oh my God, it's 7.45 right now. And technically I'm supposed to stop. I don't know if I'll get in trouble if I um, like play one more, but I feel like I should play one more because originally I said I was gonna play three with vocals. Um, Maybe I'll just do one more and hopefully not get in trouble. <laughs> um, maybe one day, going back to the music thing, maybe one day. Maybe I should do it one day soon because I'll be honest, this has been really fun. Um, I was working on a original project uh, called Love and Lack Thereof. I probably still title it that. Um, and that first song was intended to be the opening song. And then this next one I'm going to do um, would probably be one of the last ones. And I'm gonna dedicate it to all my exes. It's not like super negative, but it is just saying, you know, I, I gotta go, holler. <laughs> but fun fact real quick, despite what it sounds like, and I'm telling you this ahead of time, but if, if I were to play it, you wouldn't think it, but I actually wrote this song about smoking cigarettes and like my struggle. Uh, I don't smoke anymore, um, but I did, and it was, it was, a, it was a struggle. But uh, the name of the song is called Death of Me. I'm going to play this and uh, let you guys be on your way. Thank you again for hanging out, and I'm sure I'll say that one more time before I leave. Here we go, before they get mad that I'm running over. One, two. Oh 
met you I used to dream about you, baby And I lost my mind trying to find you But then I did I just knew you were the one Now I find myself just saying That this is all been for And I hate to say it But show me the death of me If I don't hurry and leave this town But I'll be back when the wind blows me in your direction And it's no time soon If I don't hurry and leave this town But I'll be back when the wind blows me in your direction And I hate to say it But you'll be the death of me If I don't hurry and leave this town But I'll be back when the wind Throws me in your direction And it's no time soon I wish that I could play more, but uh, again, I appreciate it.